Hello, welcome to this weekly market update with myself, Jasper Lawler. Today is the 1st of April, and we're going to look ahead at this big week in terms of economic data. We're going to split it up by region, starting with Asia. Now, the interesting numbers overnight were from China. Uh, their PMI data was out. Firstly, the HSBC numbers, which showed a contraction down to 48, below 50, uh, showing the industries contracting. The standard China number was flatlined, but the more attention should be paid to the HSBC number. The positive spin we can put on this, though, is that this, along with any soft data coming out of China going forward, um, we potentially have the stimulus effect of the Chinese government. Premier Li has said that the Chinese government have what it takes to step in and prop up the 7.5% growth needed in China to meet their, their target. Now, flipping over to Japan, we had the widely followed Tankan survey. That was on the whole fine. The, the more worrying aspect were, uh, though was the, the forecast for the next three months. Japanese business owners are clearly concerned about the upcoming sales tax increase from 5 to 8%. And the interesting thing for traders going forward will just be when does the BOJ enable any more monetary stimulus. Um, the likelihood is it will be at the end of this coming quarter, maybe around June. So then we could expect maybe to see some action in the dollar yen and the Nikkei perhaps looking at 105, and that would be the key breakout area, um, perhaps starting as early as this month, but most likely May. Now, this promises to be an interesting week for Europe. We have the ECB rate setting meeting on Thursday. The first bit of data that we were looking at was the manufacturing PMIs. Now, they came in largely uh, with consensus, just because uh, it was a slight dip on the previous month because of the tensions between Russia and Europe. The services, uh, uh, the Services PMIs are out on Thursday, slightly less impacted by the tensions between Europe and Russia, and so uh, we're expecting a continuation of the gradual improvement that we've seen. Notably, Tain, uh, Spain have seen uh, a 10 year high in uh, revenues through tourism, so that's, that's improving their service sector. Um, similar with Italy, uh, but we're expecting a slight drop in the Italian um, services this time. Um, going forward, though, uh, the unemployment numbers uh, were out today. Uh, we saw the Euro-wide, uh, Eurozone unemployment um, dropped slightly to 11.9% from the 12% seen a year earlier. It's basically flat, and um, the consideration here is that uh, really the, the ECB doesn't have any mandate to fight unemployment, as Mario Draghi pains, has been at pains to explain. Um, with the current state of the European Union and the, the way it's fiscally separated, the ECB really can't impact uh, unemployment. So, you know, that's probably a good, thing, a good thing for them, given the complete disparity across the Eurozone. Uh, Germany is actually looking at the lowest uh, levels of unemployment since the uh, separation between East and West, whereas, for example, um, you're saying youth unemployment of 57% in Spain. So very difficult to combat both of those. The, the CPI for the Eurozone came in at 0.5%, below the 0.6% expected yesterday. Now, that's added uh, to the cause for the, the people looking for some kind of stimulus from the ECB. Um, that could be a cut in the, in the deposit rate to 0.1% or even some quantitative easing. Now, what was interesting was that we saw the DAX and the CAC close lower yesterday. Now, what you'd expect is if there's poor data, then that would lead to further cause for stimulus, and that would perhaps be a good thing for the indices. But in fact, they, they close lower on bad data. So that perhaps implies um, that you know, market participants out there are not expecting some kind of stimulus. That, that same idea is supported by the fact that euro, you would expect it to be debased if there was some kind of quantitative easing or cutting interest rates, you know, and uh, you know, the euro would expect it to go down. Yesterday, it closed higher. Last but not least, we've got the good old US of A. The most important data for this week is the ISM manufacturing and non-manufacturing data. The non-manufacturing actually hit a four-year low on last month's number. So we're, we're expecting a slight uptick from, from that number just because the argument is that it was largely caused by the cold weather. And so that, the weather's improved. And so we're expecting to see a slight improvement in, in sentiment for that reason. That leads us on to the US non-farm payrolls report on Friday. Um, that's expected to come in at around 200,000. That's up from the 175,000 um, uh, that came in on the previous month. And uh, obviously, the higher number does increase the risk of, of missing the number. But again, this, uh, this cold weather effect should be behind us now. And, and so we can expect uh, possibly to see that, that 100,000 number.
that 200,000 number rather. And, and if that is the case, then we're in the happy place for US equities. Um, we've got both the stimulative effect from Janet Yellen's recent dovish comments, plus some good uh, employment numbers and some good US growth numbers. So that being the case, the, the S&P may be up to test uh, its all-time highs. Obviously, should we see a, a number worse than expected, then you know, that could point to a larger correction without that retest, and, um, and that would be interesting nonetheless too. Okay, that's the end of our weekly market update with myself, Jasper Lawler. Watch out for the non-farm payrolls, especially on Friday. Uh, you can register for our non-farm payrolls webinar on the, the link you see right here on the screen. Thanks again. Good luck trading. Mm -hmm.